What's up guys and welcome to another critical review, this time on the movie Rogue One. The first non-trilogy uh, Star Wars movie. Uh, when I say trilogy, I'm really talking about the Skywalker saga. You know what I mean, not main nine. Star Wars movie to come out back in 2016. And back when this movie came out, I remember a lot of people saying that this was one of the best Star Wars movies they, that was out there. That it was one of the best things they had seen to come from Star Wars in recent memory. I, however, don't agree. So here's the thing. I like the movie. I like Rogue One as a movie. I think it's highly enjoyable and it's a fun Star Wars movie. I just think it, that it was married too closely to the original trilogy being that it takes place literally right before the events of episode 4. So it was harder for me to get attached to any of the characters. Because here's the thing, I knew they were going to die. I knew from the onset of the film that none of these characters were making it out of the situation alive. And while it's possible to do a movie that all the characters are going to die and you know they're going to die, well... It's pretty challenging. Also, sorry if you hear noise over this. Um, it is currently thunderstorming outside of my apartment. Also, if I get increasingly shiny, uh, that is sweat because I can't record with my air conditioning unit on because it is loud enough that my microphone picks it up. Uh, but anyway, back to Rogue One. As pretty much anyone who's a Star Wars fan knows, the story of Rogue One follows uh, Jin Erso as she is forcibly brought back into the Rebellion and helps them get the uh, Death Star plans that her father made uh, and get them to the Rebellion. This movie does close the quote-unquote plot hole um, from the uh, episode 4 where with the thermal exhaust port by making it that Jin's father specifically built it in uh, as a weak spot so that the Death Star could be destroyed. However, I don't think that really needed to be explained away. Let me explain my point. That is a massive battle station. The size of a freaking moon. Really? No exhaust is needed on that thing whatsoever outside of the single exhaust port the size of a Womp Rat. Utter bullshit. Yeah, you could make the argument, oh, but you could put grates in there, but it still needs the exhaust. The fact that they somehow managed to keep it to a singular one is more impressive to me than the fact that there is a exhaust port that goes directly down to the core of the freaking Death Star. But that's just me. I, I don't know how others feel on that. But, uh, getting back to generally fast, she is one of my personal bigger problems with Rogue One. She is supposed to be the main character, but oh my god, she is so boring. She does not have any agency as a character whatsoever. <sighs> there is not a single moment in the entire film where she actively makes a decision and goes for it that plot wasn't forcing her down. She only goes to find Saw Gerrera with the Rebel Alliance because they threatened to throw her back into the hole they found her in. She only decides to rescue her father after she learns that he built the thing into the Death Star and that it can and that if they get him, they can destroy the Death Star. She only decides to you know, attack the Empire after they directly lead to her father's death and she witnessed what the Death Star could do and thought it was awful and horrid and that no one should have that kind of power. Even in the end of the film, after they're on Scarif, she's not the one getting the data card until after K2SO has died and they have to climb up. And she only it makes it the final steps of the way after Cassian supposedly dies. It is generally considered bad writing to have a character with almost no agency, and Jean is one of the worst examples of a character with no agency in my opinion. She is one of the few characters that 
ever seen on film that literally makes no important decisions to her film. I, I am not a huge fan of Jin, if that wasn't obvious. Like, the entire supporting cast, every secondary character in this film is better than Jin. Cassian is much more interesting, though barely, and we barely get to know anything about him. Chirue and what's his name? The uh, G the former guardian of Whisper blah 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 guys. <laughs> that I would like to know more about them, but they don't get jack shit in scream time. How the hell did Cassian get K2SO and get him to join his side? That's not explained at all. How the fuck did Jin's father convince that one pilot guy to join their side? This is not explained, and it really should be, because it kind of doesn't make sense, because, oh my god, coincidences. The freaking hell. It's not really explained how the hell Saw Gerrera goes fucking insane partway through the series. Not even partway through the series. In this film, he's just crazy. I don't remember him being crazy in Clone Wars. To be fair, I didn't watch Rebels. He might have been crazy in Rebels. That might be where they explained his whole thing. But in Clone Wars, he was a hot-headed dumbass who wanted to kill the Separatists and get them off his world. But he wasn't... And all in all, I just found pretty much every character much more interesting than Jin herself and wanted to see movies about them and their personal struggles. And yes, I know that Star Wars Catalyst exists. I know that Catalyst is effectively a prequel to this movie and that Catalyst gives Rogue One a lot more depth to it and all that. But a book should not be required reading materials for me to understand characters. I should be able to understand who the hell they are within the film itself. <sighs> Which leads me to my personal opinion on what Rogue One should have been. Especially after the success of The Mandalorian, Rogue One should have been a show. Maybe one season, maybe have the characters like somehow manage to survive at the end of Scarif and then start running side missions for the Rebellion during the events of the original trilogy. That would have actually been very interesting, at least to me, seeing characters running missions for the Rebellion that aren't in the main line that we see the stories of the original trilogy take. I personally think that would have been awesome. It would have been a really cool way to expand the world. But, nope. You get a movie that has a very, very generic plot, boring characters that all just die at the end of the thing. It's just, it didn't work. Like, some ideas that I have if Rogue One were a show. Basically... The first part of it, before we get like to the whole mission, give an episode for each of the main characters. Maybe combine Chue and his friend into a single episode, but you know, basically the show can start out with Jin. Give her an episode where it basically explains what she did after uh, Saw picks her up at the very beginning of the movie. We can basically see him train her as she goes through her life. and. Uh, see how she got left behind and what made her lose faith in the rebellion. Then give us an episode of Cassian, explain his backstory, where he comes from. Apparently, he is a former separatist, so give us that. See, the, him basically as a kid at the fall of the separatist army, where he ends up join, where he basically ends up joining the rebellion right after the rise of the empire, and see him come through there, so we get it, why he is where he is. You can even show us him reprogramming K2SO in that episode. Hmm, who would have fucking thunk? An episode with Chiroi and his buddy, where you show what happened to the jet to the Temple of Whispers or whatever it's called that I can't remember because it's mentioned once. But show them, the, show the fall of that temple and why they're on the streets begging. What made Chiroi's friend lose faith like he did? Then the next episode can pick up where the movie uh, starts, basically with Jin getting rescued off of whatever Imperial planet that she was being held on. Then, she gets taken to the Rebellion and is initially reluctant to help. When she finds out, oh, maybe my father is alive, she takes the initiative and chooses to go to Saw Gerrera. When she learns more information, then she goes to try and find her father because it's her father and she wants to save him. Not because he knows the plans and can help us, she just wants to save her dad because he's her dad. Cassian can still have his mission to execute Jin's father, but they can have a rapport back and forth. She can explain why he's important and that he's not a traitor. And then 
you can have him literally grappling with the with should I follow my orders or should I protect the man who could potentially save everyone? It's a much more interesting concept if this story is dragged out over a couple number of episodes. Seriously, Star Wars has always done a fantastic job when it actually comes to building massive worlds with their stories. I'm currently working my way through what is known as the Thrawn trilogy in like of the uh, Legends canon now. And it is one of the best book trilogies I've ever read, at least in my opinion. I, I'm a massive Star Wars fan, so slightly biased. But it's really, really good, and it has solid world building and explains a lot how Luke met Mara, why she wants to kill him, why she is conflicted about it. You know, builds the characters as opposed to going, here's this person and like them. So... For me, I feel like Rogue One could have worked a lot better if it was a show as opposed to a single film. You know, just something overall. Or, I don't know, maybe make Jin an actually interesting character and give her character agency as opposed to dragging her along the plot the entire time because, you know, why should I care that a character does or doesn't want to do something? Uh, those are just some of my opinions on how the movie could have been made better overall. Anyway. So overall, I'd say Rogue One rolls sadly low for a Star Wars movie, in my opinion. A 15. Like, I still enjoy watching it, and I think it's fun because Star Wars, but overall, could be a lot better. And I just find myself now, especially after watching The Mandalorian, wishing that it was a show similar to that. Showing the character's growth over time, as opposed to being, here they are! <clears throat> and having slightly boring established characters. But, that's all for me. Uh, but, tell me what you guys think. Does the movie work as is, or should it have been a series all along? Give me your thoughts in the comments down below. And that's all I have for now, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video um, and my review slash rant about you know, uh, Rogue One. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links as always are going to be in the description down below. If you'd like to watch more review videos that I have, I will have a link to the playlist on screen, probably right here. Uh, if you would like to watch another video, potentially my other Star Wars video, I will have that linked right there. But that's all I have for now, guys. And so have a great day, and as always, peace out.